welcome to my channel. My name is Linda. I've got something for you. I've got something. I've got something for you. I've got something. I've got something for you. I've got something. I've got something for you. I do. I got something for you. I got some crafts. Wow. <laughs> my name is Linda. Oh boy. Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Linda. I have some fun crafts for you. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Today we'll be working on some country farmhouse spring crafts. So let's get started with project number one. For this project, supplies to start out with, this is one of those wood books, just a plain board from Dollar Tree. And then this is one of those 12 inch chunky slats. And yes, to the right, you're looking at a wood letter from Walmart. I promise it's gonna be useful. It might seem weird, but not once you see it. <laughs> I already have a piece kind of cut off from the wood slat, so I'm gonna use that. And then I have a, just a couple, like a wood slice and another little wood piece I'm gonna be using. And then this is a chunky, wonky heart and a little flower. These come from craftingwithkimber.com. I'll have the links down below in my description box. The first thing I wanna do is just take my ruler and I wanna take this wood piece here and just kind of narrow it up at the top a little bit. I'm gonna cut off my little wood slice there. And my letter U, I'm gonna use the curved part as a handle. Okay, but you could use the other part, this here, for the spout, because yes, we're going to make a watering can, but I want my uh, spout to be a little chunkier, so I'm going to use this wood piece instead. Okay, and I'm just using my Viver mini table saw here. I'll have a link down in the description box for you. I love this. It's lightweight. It's easy to carry, easy to use, and I'm just cutting all my pieces here as I need them does a really nice job cutting. So just cutting everything, you know, to the size I want. Here I'm cutting my board down at the angle on both sides. You could leave this board just plain rectangle, not cut anything at all. And then if you just use the letter U for your pieces, you could, you know, those uh, wood letters are just kind of a paper type wood. Like you could probably cut them with a craft knife back and forth a couple of times and, and use that where you don't even need a saw at all. And then, of course, when I'm done with all my pieces, I'm going to go ahead and sand everything really nicely. Round off my squared edges. I like to round those off. Take the label off the back. And then here's my pieces ready to go. Now, my spout came off of a little bit longer piece of wood, right? So I saved that piece of wood, squared it off. I'm going to put this at the back at the bottom so it helps hold our watering can upright because I think the spout and that might try to tip it forward. So I'm putting those two little wood slices together. It's going to go on the end of the spout. I kind of have a little fun thing for it. Now for the spout, you could just wood glue. It would work perfectly fine, but I wanted to add one of these wood dowels. So my husband is just going to drill from the very top of the spout all the way into where I've got it marked here so that I can just put my wood dowel in those holes. This is what it looks like. Mark, you know, drilled all the way from the top. Easier to drill all the way from the top so you get one length drill, okay, versus trying to do two, you know, one at the bottom of the spout and one into the book. So just one all the way through. And then these are something my husband did. He saw it on YouTube. They're screws. So one end is a screw that he screwed into the wood before we screwed into the wood. And then the other are he ground it down to like little nail points. So the screw's solid in the wood and then the handle, I can just tap onto those little nail points as if I'm hammering it on. Interesting, but it does work. So I'm just gluing, wood gluing my little dowel in and then I'm gonna go ahead and wood glue the little stability piece on the back of the watering can. I don't know if this is needed or not, but I just felt like maybe because we're gonna put that little wood heart on the front and stuff, I'm gonna go ahead and clamp it on so it's nice you know, and firm and solid on there. But that little heart on the front and stuff might make it want to tip forward. And then I'm wood gluing my two wood pieces together, my wood slices and clamping them. And then I'm taking some little bitty nails here into that top piece. I'm nailing them in. You can see here like this, I'm going to go all the way around in a circle, a couple of circles, one long nail I'm going to use so that I can use this. When I hammer it down, it'll be the same length as the other ones, but I can use this with a little wood glue to nail it into the top of that spout. And then of course it'll cover that a hole there. And the reason for these nails is because I thought they would look cute like the little metal holes where the water comes out and just give it a little fun, you know, decoration. So that's totally optional. So I'm wood gluing this on and then I'll go ahead and hammer that longer nail down into position so it's the same height as the rest of them and you don't even know we did that. Okay, just a fun decoration. I just thought it reminded me of the little metal holes where the water comes out of the spout. 
For a paint today, I'm using Dixie Belle uh, chalk paint in the color drop cloth. I'm going to use a little bit of this mud paint brand. It's called Newport. And in a couple of these papers, these papers came from a little pack from Dollar Tree and they're like plaid and polka dot of each one. I love them because the, the colors are so nice and and mellow and country looking and then some of this ribbon from my stash and a little bit of 18 gauge wire the first thing i'm gonna do is take that wonky chunky heart from craftingwithkimber.com i trace around it i want to use the front side and then i'm coming about an eighth of an inch in and i'm redrawing that perimeter margin i do this all the time i know i explain it all the time but we always have new viewers right and then once i draw that new margin i'm going to cut that out and what this does is just allows me when i set it on the heart to see a little bit of wood around the heart instead of covering the heart end to end okay so just a fun little thing and then i will take that off camera to my sewing machine i'm going to actually sew on my paper now i'm adding some wood glue right around those little nail tips and you could just totally wood glue this on, but my husband wanted to try this. And it actually works good. All right. And then I'm just going to kind of push it on as far as I can push it. And then I'm going to just take a little rubber mallet and then tap it all the way the rest in. So like I said, one end is a screw head and one end is like a nail head. So it was kind of fun. Anyway, so now I'm coming in with that. It's kind of a, it's like I said, called Newport, but it's kind of like a nice country blue painting my heart and my flower. Give a little bit of blue to go in with our scrapbook paper and then i'm using that drop cloth to just kind of paint the center of our flower here and then i'll go ahead and distress everything i start by distressing a little bit on the heart and then i realize it's just the blue on the heart is a little bit too much and it takes away from the blue flower so i'll come in again here in a minute and really sand it off heavy so you barely see any coming out around the paper but it just gives a little bit of color so it kind of matches but the the blueness of the heart is what is really seen. So here is my paper all sewn around it. Now I'm taking the open end of my scissor blades. I scrape along the edges, give us a little bit of a rough and kind of rustic look and it'll allow that paper with a little bit of shadowing around it to kind of pop up off of the wood. And here I am kind of distressing my heart just a little bit more. And now you can see just a little bit peeking out and now the blue flower really stands out. And now I'm taking some of that blue paint and just adding some little dots to the front of it. Although then later I decide to kind of cover some of those dots up, but it'll still be cute. <laughs> I'm going to glue the paper onto my wooden heart. And then I'm going to take that drop cloth paint mixed with water and a fan brush, dip it into that paint, wipe off the excess, tap the fan brush, get a few splatters on my heart and my flower and then I'm taking that same drop cloth paint either even further watered down because I want it to just kind of look like a wash where you can see a little bit of the grain of the wood still popping through and then I will sand it distress it off camera a little bit more even around the edges but I didn't want it like a full complete paint here's what it looks like sanded so it gives it nice rustic. I even kind of painted on the wood slices and everything, sand those off. Now I'm going to take that blue paint mixed with water and a fan brush, same process, and add some blue splatters across the front, across the back, because I like the back finished off. And then I'm taking a drill bit, the same diameter as the wire I'm going to use, and I'm going to drill two little holes, one on each end, right at the top of our watering can here. And then we're going to jump back to our flower. In the center of the flower, I wanted to add some of those little nails in the center there as well, like three or four of them, just so it kind of complements the nails in the wood slice. So it doesn't look like we just did the nails in the wood slice only. Is that understandable? I wanted it to look cohesive. And then once that's done, I will go ahead and glue my heart down at the bottom where I want it, kind of near the handle hanging off. And then using Beacon Fabri-Tac glue here, and I'm going to add just a little moss just around one side. I kind of tried it behind the flower, but it was a little too much moss for me, but just a little on the outside. So it kind of has that earthy, organic look a little bit. And then I'm taking a nice, just long chunk of wire the center of it, wrapping it around a large handle paintbrush, and then I'll pull that apart, kind of straighten out the ends. It's too much wire. I just did a big piece, and I'm going to do one of each end through the holes, and I will cut off the excess. All right, and then I'm taking just some rounded jewelry pliers, rounded needle nose pliers, and I'm using that to make some twisties in the wire. And I was going to do it like this and leave it like this, but then I decided I pulled that wire out a little bit more, and decide to bring it up and over the top and then around the wire at the top of that. So it just kind of, because it looked naked from 
the little curly cues on the front up to the wire. So I thought I'd kind of join them together to make it look more joined together. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing there, just kind of wrapping it around that wire and it'll kind of lock it in place and still give us our cute curly cues. All right, and then once that's done, I'm gonna wrap my ribbon just around one end here and just make a little bow. And I was gonna be done with this, but I'm like, it needs something else. So I've decided to take a little bit of the scrapbook paper and what I'm gonna do is just ran it through my printer. I printed off just Spring Blossoms Word. I'll leave the font in the description box down below onto the scrapbook paper. Off camera, I'll sew around that scrapbook paper. And then I'm taking that blue paint and just painting both sides. This is a little cardboard tag. This is what my tag looks like sewn around it. I did one for the back as well. I'm gluing the back on here, just so if the back gets seen, which it would, and then going ahead and gluing the front on. And then I will just punch a little hole at the top after I rough in the edges with my scissor blades here. Got to keep that rustic look cohesive with the heart. Splatter it, forgot I splattered it. Splatter it with some of the blue paint. And then I'm gonna use one of these bulb pins through the tag and through the center of the bow. And that makes this project complete. Let's move on to project number two. For this project, I'm going to be using these fabrics. These top three come from Jubilee Fabrics. I'll have links down below for you. This is actual like a little curtain for a couple of dollars I found at a thrift store, but I like the pattern. So think about that kind of thing when you're in thrift stores. And then this is just a quilt I bought off Wayfair I've been cutting on. And then I have a free pattern for you. So the bottom here is a eggshell you just cut it out cut two of fabric cut two of batting if you want a quilted look the top this is an egg it's not the full egg you're gonna have to place it on the fold of your fabric okay so you fold your fabric here this would be the shape cut out and you place that on the fold and cut that out okay the link will be in the description box to my blog for these patterns and you have a beak a pocket and a heart all right, each of them cut your fabric and batting if you want so I'm going to use versus my egg my fabric and two pieces of batting for the egg top. Okay, for the bottom, I decided I wanted a little thicker for some reason. I don't know why, but I cut four pieces of batting. You could cut four, you could cut two, you could cut none. It's up to you. Okay, and then my two pieces of fabric. My nose, I actually went ahead and cut two pieces of fabric and then two pieces of batting. Give it a little bit thicker. The heart, I did the same thing. Two pieces of fabric, two pieces of batting, because I know it says like one piece of fabric. And in the pocket, same thing, okay? And then I also have here, this is a little, I'm gonna use it like a patch. I just had a little extra piece of this fabric and I cut it out, so I'm gonna use it like a little patch. You could cut out a little square. And then this little piece that I printed onto some fabric, I will have a link in my description box for the words and how to print on it to fabric using your printer, okay? Also for this project, I'm using Beacon Fabri-Tac glue and these crochet threads you can get at Walmart, okay? They're a couple dollars a skein. All right, so first thing we need to do is get our, if you're using batting, get our batting attached to our fabric pieces. We're gonna lay the egg, of course, inside with, the, you'll have about a half inch on either side, the eggshell, okay? Just like this. Yeah, it's an egg coming out of eggshell. Thought it was super cute. I saw the idea on Pinterest, so we're making it lindified. What we want to do is get it together, but have an opening to stuff it like a pillow if we want. So right now what I'm doing, since I'm using two pieces of batting, is getting my batting glued together. All right, and then of course I'm going to glue it to my top fabric for my eggshell. 
perfect. And then I'm going to get my, I'll do the same thing on the other eggshell. And then I'm going to get my batting one piece onto either side of the egg. Don't glue the eggs together yet. Okay. Now what we want to do is I flip my eggshell over, flip my egg over, and we want to attach the bottom part of the egg just below the little triangle areas on the eggshell itself. We want these to now become one unit. So just a little bit of glue here, and then you can turn it back over on the other side and kind of peel the cracked part open and add a little more glue if you need to. Okay, and then this I'm just going to lay together so I've got it exactly as the other one. Add my glue here and then get my eggshell on so everything's even, so my eggshell's all even. Now what I want to do is your sewer, you can sew across this. I'm going to hand sew it, but only sew across the cracked area, okay, on both pieces for right now, okay? Right, so I've got some of that crochet thread. I've got a big needle here. Nice, big, long piece because we're going to need a little bit of it. And I'm just going to start adding just some cute little straight country stitches. I'll have a link to my blog. You know, if you're a gluer, this is great to add some texture to it. You don't have to do this at all. If you're a sewer and you don't want to use your sewing machine, but add texture like this. But if you've never sewed by hand or anything, link to my blog and there'll be a little video there. that says how to sew some basic stitches. And basically, I'm just going in and out and creating some little straight stitches, as you see here, probably about a... A little quarter inch of space in between. I'll go all the way across on both of these off camera and here they are done. Don't want to waste your time sitting there watching me do that. You can see from the back side that will help also hold the egg in place, not only just glue. And again, we want to now leave it open for stuffing. So that's why we put those two pieces together. Okay, so the glue and the stitching helps. Now we're going to do the little beak and some eyes. We're only working on one piece of your egg and shell. Okay, glue your nose together if you got batting and all that so i'm gluing all my batting together here and gluing my front and back of my nose okay get it into position i'm going to glue it down you can see the other half of our eggs off to the side i'm only working on one egg here and then i'm going to use that thread again and i'm just going to come in from the back side to the front and then from the front to the back of course you got to go back and forth and i'm going to add just some little straight stitches again all the way around the beak Okay, I just think it gives it something super cute. If you're a sewer and you want to sew the beak on, go right ahead. But I just thought the country stitches are different. I'm not going to do my sewing machine on this, so it'll be fun. Now, I'm still hooked here. You can see I knotted it and I'm still hooked because we need to now make some eyes. Really easy. We're just going to make a couple little lines. So I'm coming right up above where I want it from the back to the front and then from the front to the back and a little kind of a slanted diagonal line. There's one eyeball. Then I'm going to come over a little bit from the back to the front, front to the back, make another little dash line. That's cute. And then I decided it just needed to be a little bit more bold, so I'm going right back over the same stitches here to make the eyes a little bit darker. Okay? You don't have to do this. I just thought my thread isn't a, a real thick one, so I thought twice would be great. <laughs> and then I'm just tied off in the back. Now we can go ahead and cut our thread off. Okay? Just like that. I just love adding these country stitches. I think it's fun. And now what I'm doing is I'm just getting my pocket together, okay? I'm just getting my batting glued to my fabric pieces. Again, you could just use one fabric, one piece of batting, but I want mine to, all my pieces to just look a little bit thicker. So I'm gluing that together. Get our pocket going here. And then, of course, I'll glue the heart together. Perfect. And then, of course, I'm going to glue my little tag together. And I know it says Spring Cottage, but it's okay. In my brain, I'll tell you in a minute. So now in my pocket, there's a reason for it. It works. It was my last little tag left. I had printed off on the fabric. I'm like, I'm going to use it, but it works because I'll explain the story. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some stitches just across the top of the pocket only. Because I want this to actually be a pocket, right? So just across the top only. Now, while the thread's still on there, I'm going to go ahead and sew my little patch on. You, If you're not going to sew the patch on, you know, you're just gluing things together. Obviously, you're not worrying about any of this detail on the pocket. But since my thread's already there, I'm sewing my patch on. Because once we, you know, attach our pocket to the eggshell, 
you're not, it's going to be too difficult to, you know, get that patch on there. So if you're a gluer, go ahead and glue around the perimeter to make your pocket, right? I'm going to go ahead and continue on. I've got a new piece of thread on my needle here. Again, we're only using one half of our egg and shell, right? And I'm going to finish my little stitching detail all the way around that perimeter, okay? All right, so here everything is ready. I've got my little pocket detail. I've got my back ready to go. Now I'm gonna put the two pieces together. Worry about our little heart and tag in a minute. So we've got our cute little chicken and our egg, but it's looking a little flat. I wanna add a little bit of shadowing dimension to it. So what I'm gonna do is I've just got my Distress Oxide glue from Ranger. It's called Walnut Stain. You can get these in the scrapbooking sections. Uh, you know, any local, you know, Hobby Lobby, Michael's, Joann's, and I'm just taking my little ink dauber. And as you can see, I'm just adding ink around the perimeter of like the eggshell here. See how that shadowing kind of makes the piece pop up. I'm going to add it around the pocket on the patch a little bit as well. It just makes each piece look a little more individual. Going to add it onto the beak. Just like if you're painting something, you want to add a little shadowing around it. That's what we're doing here with a little bit of ink. Okay. And it will dry permanently. And I'm going even right up above our little cracked part. I'm going to go around the eyes a little bit as well. Of course, around the perimeter of the egg just to make things pop up. I'll do the same thing on the back side. Once that's done, now it's time to glue or if you're doing it by machine to get your two pieces together. Okay, so I'm just doing a nice, nice kind of thick line of glue the top of the egg. And then around the bottom, but as I go around the bottom, I'm leaving, did you see I glued in and I skipped about a little four inch spot there and I'm coming up around the other side because remember we want to stuff this like a little pillow if you want to stuff it like a pillow. But we want enough glue that it's going to, you know, kind of hold this thing together while we stuff it and then we come in with the stitches. Okay, so I've got it all together. Opening is for stuffing here. Now I'm going to come in with the stitches at the top. I'm going to use this cream crochet thread. Again, these are Walmart and make my little stitches. Okay, I'll do a couple here, but then I'll just do the rest off camera because we it's all the same stitch, nothing fancy here. Again, link will be down below. Now I started my knot like in between the two layers of fabric and then add a little glue there so that the knot's hidden. And then I will come through and add the little stitches. It's going to be a little tough because I'm going through layers of fabric and probably some glue where I glued it together. Okay, but if you're just gluing this, you want to make sure you have ample amount of glue, which I should have finished my thought earlier. I kind of went on to something else so that when you stuff it, you know, it doesn't come right back apart. You can use hot glue for this if you wanted or the Fabri-Tac glue I find works great. So with a little editing magic, I've got mine already sewn around the edges here. And I went ahead and did it on my heart as well here off camera and around my little spring cottage tag. So I know it's a spring cottage and we've got an egg, but here's the story and it's going to make the tag work, right? So spring cottage, you're at your cottage. You've got a beautiful lake in front of you. There's little ducks floating on the water. you got, a, you know, maybe a little hatchery of cute little chicks running around next to the water, right? Spring cottage. There's the story. Now the tag works, doesn't it? <laughs> All right. Once you got everything ready to go, go ahead and stuff everything, right? Got it stuffed as full as you want it. And now I'm going to come in and just finish this off with the sewing. I've started in between the fabrics again to put a little knot in between to hide that knot. And then I'm going to come around and just do the stitches all the way around the bottom part of our little cracked egg. Editing magic here. I'm coming near the end. I think the stitches just give it a little something. I just like it. And then when I end that last stitch, I'm going to go ahead as I come to the back side here. I'm going to actually start to pull through the front a little bit, but only one layer of the fabric. So I can knot it off between the layers here. Make a little knot, tie off or cut off the excess, add a little glue. Hides the knot, keeps everything together. Now I'm going to go ahead and glue my heart inside the pocket, the angle I want it. I'm going to glue my little tag on over our patch, because now it's a spring cottage. Glue a little twine bow here. Thought it would need a little something more and a cute little wood button. And that makes this project complete.
let's move on to our last project, number three. For this project, I'm using just some vintage kind of flower trim, some more black crochet thread, a couple of beads for eyes. Yep, we're making another cute little critter. And this is actually a skirt I found at a thrift store for a couple of dollars. Loved the texture on it, but you could use like batting. We're going to use batting anyway, but it's the same kind of texture as batting, but just a little bit more textury. <laughs> I think I just made up a word. Uh, anyway, some batting. This is a placemat I found at a thrift store, and then this is some fabric. I believe both of these came from Hobby Lobby. And then another pattern for you, a printable. This is a bunny. You'll just cut it out, tape it together at the dash lines, and cut it out. It says two of fabric, a couple of uh, batting and then I've got a little nose a heart and a patch but what I decided to do is I actually wanted to use the pocket and the heart again off of the egg but you've got some options here you could do, go either way so I've got my two main pieces of fabric cut out and two pieces of batting you all know how I operate I've got one pocket because it's pretty thick and two pieces of batting two for the heart and a couple pieces of batting here and then two fabric and two piece batting for the nose. Again, you could do one of each. And then what we're gonna do first is just lay our batting, if you're using batting, onto our bunny shape here. If you're a gluer, glue your batting onto each bunny piece, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of spot glue it down. I am gonna use my sewing machine on this, but just doing it this way just helps hold the batting in place and I don't have to really pin it. So I'm just kind of spot gluing it down. If you're a gluer, gluer, you're going to glue it down really well. Okay? All right. Uh, and now I'm going to go ahead and get my other pieces ready. I'm going to, if you're a gluer, you know, you're going to glue all your batting and pocket stuff together. Really good. I'm just going to spot glue it here again just to hold it in place as I take it to the sewing machine. Just a little line of glue there. Same with the heart, but if you're a gluer, glue it all together really well. I had one piece of batting here, but off camera I end up adding another piece because I wanted my heart a little bit thicker like on our last project. And then, of course, spot gluing the little nose together. Two pieces of batting. You could just do one piece of fabric, one piece of batting. If you're a gluer, go ahead and glue your nose on. Your pocket, we're going to do the same way as last time, right? You can go around the edge if you're a gluer and glue that on. Then you glue your heart inside of your pocket, just like the last one. If you're a sewer, you can sew your nose onto one piece of your bunny, one half of your bunny, okay? But what I want to do is I'm going to sew around my nose and then glue it on, and then my pocket, I'm going to go ahead and sew the top, and then since that's such a thick fabric because it's a placemat, I will sew the bottom onto the bunny. But So here I am sewing the nose. I don't know why I wanted to do it that way. I just did. And then I'm just sewing across the pocket only, top of the pocket. And then here I am sewing around the heart to give it that little more detail. Okay, and now I'm taking the pocket to just the top part of the bunny, not the bottom, and sewing around that perimeter. Again, if you're a gluer, you'll just glue that on. And then I'm going to glue my heart into the pocket. You could sew your heart onto that fabric and everything as well. And now if you're a gluer, I'm taking some of that crochet thread and I want to add that little thing on the bunnies that they usually have, kind of like the mouth. Just a little, you know, one inch chunk and you glue it right below the nose. I'm going to leave that little piece there. You just glue that down. I'm going to use my needle and crochet thread and just kind of come out where I want the top of that nose to be because I want it that length. It's just kind of acting as my guide and I'm sewing that on. But basically, if you know if you're a gluer, you're just going to glue the little piece on, and then my nose will kind of go right at the top. All right. First thing, though, because my yarn is still attached, right? I'm going to see where I want my eyes on, right above my nose. So I'm adding my beads to the front. I come from the back, add my bead, and then bring my needle back through the back of that fabric. Here I'm coming from the back, add my bead, and then come right back through the back of it, right close to that bead, and get those in place. Perfect, and then I can go ahead and knot it off and cut off the excess. Wonderful, and now I can go ahead and glue my nose on. And when I glue this on, I actually kind of press my nail and indent it around where I sewed in. It kind of helps make it puffy. Now I'm doing the whiskers. You could totally just glue them on, but what I want to do is, as you can see, I'm coming from the front to the back with my needle right near the nose. I'm leaving about four inches of thread hang out. And then I'm gonna come from the backside right close to where I came out. Not the same hole, but right close to it. And I'm gonna bring that needle from the back to the front. All right, and then I'm gonna cut off the excess, just like that. I'm gonna do it again. I'll just show this one side. I'm gonna go right close to the nose, pull the needle from the front to the back, 
leave about four inches of string hanging, go right close to it from the back to the front, pull that needle all the way through, and then cut off the excess. All right, we're gonna leave those alone for a minute. You can see down below my whiskers are up and out of the way. I'm using some of that Distress Ink in worn lipstick, and I'm just using a little dauber here, and I'm making some cute little pink cheeks. You could use some blush or something like that if you wanted watered down paint, something like that, okay? Once I got those where I like it, now I'm taking each of those pieces of string and I actually tie three knots. I show two here, but then I come back in later and do one more knot, okay? Just like that. So it'll give us a little bit of definition at the base on the fabric, right? It gives us a little bit of definition of those whiskers coming out. Just adds a little bit of detail is all, okay? But again, I do three knots. I kind of liked how three knots, knots raised it a little bit higher. I'll do it on all four of these, okay? You might have to fiddle with the thread a little bit so they, you know, once you tie them in a knot, they're not split apart, you know what I mean? That they're close together. Is that understandable? You know, when you tie a knot, <laughs> they kind of spread out the tails. And then what I'm gonna do is glue each of these in the direction I want them to be, the whiskers down, but I'm making sure that I stay about an inch away from the edge because I'm gonna sew the bunny together right? I want to make sure that I don't glue all the way to the edge because you don't want to sew over your whiskers. If you're a gluer, that part doesn't matter, but just glue them how you want them designed to be. We want to get our bunny together. If you're a gluer, you're going to go all the way around the perimeter of your back bunny and leave a little spot open on the front where you can stuff it, and then once you stuff it, then you can glue it closed. If you're a sewer, you're going to do the same process, but watch where your whiskers are. Make sure you pull them up out of the way so you don't sew over the top of your whiskers. Again, then once you do that, you can stuff it and sew your opening closed. So I'll just show a little bit of sewing here. I think this one turned out really, really cute. I kind of like it. Again, I saw an idea on Pinterest, but there was like three different bunnies that I liked. And so I took a little bit of each one that I liked, and then I kind of lindified it and made my own thing. <laughs> And I've got about, for those of you that are sewers, uh, probably about a quarter inch seam allowance here and see how I'm pulling the whiskers up out of the way so I don't sew over the top. And if you're a gluer and you want to add the cute little stitches like we just did on the little chicky and the egg, you could totally do that. All right, so it's all stuffed and I sewed across it. I was almost going to be done. I'm like, and I wasn't going to do this actually, but I thought I need a little tail on the back. So I've got a four inch uh, diameter circle here. I've got a regular needle and thread here, and I'm just going to go around the edge doing a little pleating action to get my thread to go around it. Again, if you're a beginner in doing this, I will have a link to my blog where I talked about the link earlier on the last project, basic sewing. This will be in there to show you how to do it. So you just pleat it back and forth on your needle, and then where you're not is you pull that out a little bit so you've got two long strings, stuff it, and then pull those two long strings together to close your opening. It's not gonna get all the way closed, but it'll be closed enough. And then you can tie that off so it doesn't you know, come unraveled, of course. Get it as tight as you can, the opening as small as possible. And then you know, cut off your excess threads. I usually knot about four or five times here. And then you can glue it on if you want. Off camera, I'm just gonna take that same needle and thread and just stitch it on, okay? So here it is, already done, really cute. Looks much better, he's got a tail. I'm gonna take some of that cute flower trim and I'm just gonna glue it across the top of the pocket. And then I've got some of this fabric. I ripped a big long piece. I think it's two inches by about four inches, but I decided it was really long, so I'm taking about an inch off. Same fabric as I did for the heart and I'm just gonna crinkle it together in the middle and just tie a little bow like this. Really, really easy. And then I'm gonna glue that on on one of the ears. And then I'm gonna add detail like I did the little chicky again. I'm gonna add a little twine in a bow. And then a cute little button. And that makes this project complete. So I hope you enjoyed all of our projects today. Leave me a comment down below and let me know which one that you want to make right now or you want to make it right now, but you're going to have to add it to a very long craft list, <laughs> maybe for next year's spring and Easter season. Please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps my channel to grow. And if you walked in here for the first time, you're just checking things out, you're digging what you saw, make sure before you click off, you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on another craft from me. 
Before I go, I'm going to leave you with one final thought. Faith, a five-letter word with so much meaning attached. Faith means to have complete trust or confidence in someone or something. The word faith holds a common theme no matter when or how it's used, and this common theme is trust. Putting your faith in God requires trust to be a necessity. It must endure in the face of any doubt or fear, and often your thoughts manage you versus you managing your thoughts when doubt or fear is in your life. To push through this, you must rely completely on God. It means you must believe in God's power and strength. It means you must believe that He can and will do His absolute best for you. And it means you must believe that all of His promises in the face of adversity will be completed for you. No matter how scary the situation may be, faith will give you the endurance to rely on God. In the Bible, the book of Mark, chapter 11, verses 22 and 23, Jesus says, Have faith in God. Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Jesus is telling you to have a complete trust in God without doubt. So if your faith is low, or you have feelings of uncertainty, or fear of a possible outcome, with complete trust, God's power will be made strong in your weakness. The dictionary also states that faith is a belief based on evidence without total proof, but that's where the dictionary needs a rewrite. It should read that faith is a belief based on 100% evidence of God's word. Because if Jesus says to have faith, do not doubt, just believe, and it will be done for you, then the Bible contains pure truth about God, about his power, his strength, his absoluteness, his promises, all of this according to Psalms 119, verse 89. This verse states, Your word, Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. This verse proves the validity of his truth. This is the one book over and over that shows God can be trusted in all things and in all ways, from the past to this present day and into the future. It's the one book that proves God loves you, He's always for you, and if God is for you, who can be against you? It's the one book that proves how a five-letter word can move mountains. So no matter what is in your life today, allow five letters to be the solid rock on which you stand. Allow it to be an assurance of things hoped for. Never fear it. Never walk away from it. Let it help you stand taller in adversity and give you confidence when faced with your fears. When doubt fills your mind, allow God's comfort to give you renewed hope. Have complete trust in God and allow this trust to give your faith the confidence you need to fix your eyes on God's promises for your life. I thank you for sharing your time with me and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.